Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to talk about the best video game capture utility. There's a ton of capture utilities out there. I can't tell you about all of them, but I'm going to tell you about four very popular capture utilities that you can use on any PC. And if you find this video helpful, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and give me a comment. Let me know what you think and tell me what your favorite capture utility is. If you want more information, you can see the live stream where Trustin and I have a discussion live. Check the description for a link to the live stream footage as well as Trustin's perspective on the best capture utility. All right, so let's talk about Fraps. It's a great capture utility, but there's some pros and cons. Although Fraps takes raw, super high quality video, and for me, it's never missed a frame. It makes huge files. The files are really big. They'll fill up your whole hard drive. When all else fails, Fraps is a great go-to program for high quality, super high quality, easy to edit footage. Basically, the way I set mine up, either 30 or 60 FPS, preferably, and uh, sound capture settings, you can record Windows 7 sound, and you can also record your microphone by checking that button right there. All right, next up, let's take a look at DxTory. DxTory is a great capture utility. I really like this one. Uh, this capture utility is super versatile and it gives you lots and lots of options to get a great video capture. This one is up there with Fraps, but it has tons of more features that let you customize how you record video and audio. One of my favorite things about DxTory is that you can use external codecs. That means that you can install, uh, you can install other third-party codecs and use them within DxTory. Popular codecs with DxTory include Lagerith Lossless Codec. Make sure you check the description if you want to download the Lagerith Lossless Codec. This is a great codec for capturing video as well as editing. This is a known codec in the editing community and uh, it makes very high quality AVI files with a little bit of compression. The files are still huge, but they're super good quality and it's somewhat of a standard. Here's one that I'm trying and I got a, a shout out to my boy Dolce for turning me on to this codec. This one is the Matrox codec. This one is popular in the Battlefield 4 community for making Battlefield 4 montages and cinematics. This one here is cool because it gives you high quality but slightly smaller file size and you can select the bit rate that you record at. So that's really important. For example here I'll click on Matarox MPEG-2 uh, and you can play with these settings to try to find the best frame rate for what you're recording. And uh, what I found with my test was and I tested this codec and it looked great, it looked solid. Uh, I recommend something above 150 here for battlefield footage at 60 FPS. Uh, but what I found was it never missed a frame. That's important and I'm going to tell you more about that later. All right, I'm just going to set it at 175. That seemed to do pretty good, but between 150 and 200 was good. 200 being a lot better, of course. One of the things you can do is you can split up your audio channels here. This is really important if, for example, you want to separate the game audio from your microphone audio or even your Skype audio, for example, and you want to record those into separate channels for editing later. But the more audio channels you add, of course, it gets complicated. So DxToy comes with these utilities to help you sort things out. It allows you to set up how you use the CPU versus the GPU processing, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, this is going to let you optimize your game capture for best performance. Here it even lets you choose the amount of threads you want to use. Okay, cool. So that's DxToy. I love this tool. I use this. I use this way more than Fraps. And this program is my personal go-to when I want to record something really epic at really high quality, and I don't want to miss a frame, like say a World of Warcraft cinematic or a Battlefield cinematic. And uh, there's going to be a lot of really fast gameplay, and I want to get the best quality possible so that I can use things like slow motion and color grading in the end. This program will do the trick. Next, let's talk about Bandicam. Bandicam is one of my personal favorites. This one is a very simple, easy to use, and very versatile capture program. Bandicam is one that I've suggested uh, to my friends and also to the legends that are in Swifty's Legends of the Arena. Uh, if they don't already have a capture utility that they're comfortable with, I usually recommend them uh, Bandicam. Uh, the newest version of Bandicam allows you to capture in 4K resolution. Okay, we don't all have 4K monitors yet, but a lot of us will soon, and 4K is going to be the next step in resolution over 1080. I like that Bandicam is looking forward to that and giving us the option to capture in 4K if, say, we have a 4K monitor. Bandicam is also known for being very easy on your CPU, so more people can use this because not everybody has a supercomputer, and uh, people will go to Bandicam if their computer is not fast enough or if their hard drives are not fast enough to use DxTory 
and for apps. Uh, this program also makes very small file sizes. So these small file sizes are easier to transfer over the internet if you're doing a video collaboration or if you're uploading directly to YouTube, for example. There are some limitations that I've experienced. This may not apply to everyone, but at least in my hands, uh, I've had a difficult time getting up to 120. But uh, there's what 60 looks like. Here you can choose the codec you use, and it does have an optimized H.264 codec if you're using an AMD card or if you're using an NVIDIA card, you can get the GPU to compress your video for you, which is really great. Stay away from XVID. It works, but it's old. Uh, I don't like it. Motion JPEG is a great codec for Bandicam. This will give you pretty high quality and relatively low file sizes. What you can do is choose from the Bandicam presets if you want to optimize for Sony Vegas or Premiere. And one of the things I like about this program is you can capture your screen. And in fact, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm capturing my screen with Bandicam to make this tutorial. And uh, something that I realized is that I forgot to check the show mouse cursor in Bandicam. And uh, that's why you can't see my mouse cursor. So, well, it makes a relatively small file. I don't need a huge high quality capture to make tutorials right. Uh, so I can make the tutorial with this program, then hop into a game and capture some long game footage. Let's say an entire BG, or if you're playing League of Legends, you might want to capture the entire game, but you don't want to fill up your hard drive, this would probably be the program for you. Now, one of the problems that I noticed here with Bandicam, there were some limitations, and I'm not sure if it's just me or if it's happening to other people. Trustin also had this problem. We couldn't capture in full screen mode with the DirectX capture in Battlefield 4. So that was really disappointing, and that's kind of a big deal. For some reason, the program crashed, and it crashed the game. So maybe we just need to wait for an update uh, from Bandicam or an update for our graphics drivers um, before that works. But it, in windowed mode, it captures fine. Another problem that I've had in the past with Bandicam is every once in a while I will experience lost frames. I can move frame by frame to confirm that I actually have captured 60 frames per second. And with the Bandicam footage, I notice every once in a while I miss a frame. So as I'm clicking through, you see that it's moving every time I click. But every, every couple of clicks, I get a duplicate frame. So it doesn't actually capture 60 frames per second sometimes. Now this might not be a problem on a faster computer, but I've got a pretty fast computer as it is. And when I use a DXTory or other codecs, I don't run into this problem as often at all. Uh, so I'm not sure what is going on with uh, Bandicam. And, and it might be also codec dependent. It's not a problem in most cases if you're just, you know, uh, making a simple montage or uh, putting some video footage together. The only time I've seen it become a problem is when you try to go into slow motion. And I do this a lot with Swifty's Legends of the Arena. I will use slow motion to emphasize character abilities and emphasize really cool gameplay. And uh, I see a lot of stutters when there's a missed frame like this. Let's take a look now at Marilla's Action. All right, this is a capture utility a good friend of mine, Volchan, uh, told me about. And he's really happy with this, so I decided I would test it out for this tutorial. I'm always looking for new capture utilities that are on the cutting edge of technology and uh, easier and easy to use for gamers. So I gave this one a try. This lets you do a whole bunch of things. This is actually a really cool capture utility. It's a very versatile and it has a lot of features on it. It lets you capture your desktop, but the only problem is you must be running Windows Arrow to capture your desktop uh, if you want to do desktop capture. I wasn't too happy about this because I don't use Arrow. I actually I choose to disable the arrow in order to maximize FPS uh, on my gaming machine. So that's kind of a bummer there. Uh, that problem doesn't exist in Bandicam, but not too worried about that. Let's take a look at the game capture mode. This is pretty good. It allows you multiple formats. You can record in AVI or in MP4 using your graphics card to encode, uh, to encode H.264. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, using the AVI format, I tested this out and it records very high quality AVI. Doesn't miss a frame at 60 FPS. Seems to be pretty easy on your CPU. Now, if you go to the Action website, uh, they tell you that their CPU usage is more optimized compared to Bandicam, Fraps, DXTory, and all of the other capture utilities that I told you about today. For some reason, I did have some trouble capturing with MP4. I think it was just my graphics card that didn't want to uh, work with MP4. It might be different for you guys. Uh, but when it did work, the MP4 files were very small and they were pretty good quality. So this program is definitely going to be something worth looking at. And if you buy the full, if you get the full version, you can even live stream with this program. That's pretty cool. And that's uh, Marilla's Action. The only problem that I have with this one is that 
You can't select from external codecs. That's kind of a bummer, but whatever. Uh, but it comes built in with its own codecs, uh, which work very well. Uh, so that's okay. But that is definitely a limitation compared to both Bandicam and DX Story. And both of those programs let you choose an external codec like Ligarith. Let's talk about OBS. OBS is free. OBS stands for Open Broadcast Software, and uh, most of us use this for streaming. But you, there's also an option, if you go into the settings, where you can just save to disk. Uh, for example, here you can go to File Output Only. Now this is great, and it's easy to use because you can set up your webcam, you can set up overlays, you can do all the things that people do using their live stream. And all you have to do really is increase your encoding settings to be much higher. Let's say, I don't know, 25,000 or uh, something like that. You probably have to set this much higher if you want to get high quality. Now, the problem that I found with OBS, however, it, it is not easy to edit the footage that's encoded. So I definitely don't choose OBS for capture. It's not as high quality and the files are much smaller, but they're much more difficult and slower to edit. I didn't talk about every capture utility. I just talked about the ones that I use and the ones that I think are the best. For example, uh, I didn't mention Shadowplay. Now, a lot of people are using Shadowplay. You can only use it if you have an NVIDIA card. And that's one of the reasons that I chose not to talk about it here. Uh, that kind of leaves out all the people with AMD cards. Leave your opinion on AMD versus NVIDIA in the comments. I'm curious to hear what you guys say. Uh, something else that I didn't talk about was capture cards. The capture card is a hardware device that encodes the video for you so your CPU and your GPU don't have to. It can increase your gaming performance and produce some decent quality video and you can capture whatever video input you plug into the capture card. So you can capture from your uh, Xbox or PlayStation or a uh, video camera. But I find that capture software is preferable because you can capture in various codec formats and uh, you have a lot more options to play with. I'm going to have a number one pick and a number two pick from both of them. And that's because it depends on what you're using them for. My number one pick uh, overall for uh, the best tool that I could have in my toolbox, if I could only pick one, I would pick Bandicam. Uh, and, and that is because it does great screen capture. It does pretty good game capture and makes small file sizes. And you can choose whatever codec you want. Uh, if you want to use Lagarith or another third-party codec, you can do that. Uh, you can capture using a GPU MP4 encoding technology, uh, and it now supports 4K. So it is going to be the most robust go-to program for all your capture needs. However, but it's not perfect. Uh, because I did have some problems uh, with missing frames every now and again with Bandicam, and therefore, for high-quality capture, I choose DxTory. DxTory is my go-to for the highest quality gaming capture if you're doing cinematics or montage footage. DxTory's files can be really big, but again, you can choose from external codecs to help reduce those file sizes down to something that uh, is acceptable for you. And you can use codecs that are really easy and efficient to edit when you bring those files into your video editing software. What type of hard drive should you have uh, for capturing? Well, to optimize your capture experience, you should capture to a different hard drive from your operating system and from the hard drive that your games are being loaded from. It's nice to have a dedicated hard drive to capture your video too. Make sure you check the description and watch the live stream version of the best capture utility where Trustin and I team up together with the live stream and we let everybody give their feedback. So make sure you check that out and also check out Trustin's version of this video so you can see his perspective on the best capture utility. All right, guys, if you guys enjoyed this video and you learned something, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video and please leave a comment. That's a free way to support the channel. And please share the video as well to get it out there so we can help others. All right, guys, see you next time. Good luck and have fun.